Okay, uh, if I could have everyone's attention. I just want to be uh, aware of the time, make sure that we uh, use it as efficiently as possible. Uh, my name is David Mackey, and uh, make sure that you're at the right spot. I'm here to talk about digital marketing with WordPress. Um, if you're not here for that session, this is probably the time to find the session you want to be in. Um, and um, hopefully it'll be uh, uh, educational and informational for you. And um, why don't we start into it? Oh, actually, sorry, one last thing. Um, for this particular room, I know for some of the people at the back, you may have trouble seeing the full screen, especially at the bottom. And I do have content that's at the bottom, uh, so this, this room is not set up best for you. I want to let you know that these slides are on slideshare.net. And look at uh, slideshare.net slash David Mackey, one word, 351. So don't worry if you can't see everything right now. Okay, all I want to do today is I want to start out with saying, um, who are you? Because I want to make sure that I tailor the information I give to the people I have in the audience. I'm going to talk a little bit about who I am so that you have a, a awareness of what my background is and where I'm coming from because that makes a difference in terms of uh, well, whether you believe me or not. Uh, hopefully you do. Uh, the main content is really going to be uh, two phases. We're going to talk a little bit about what problem are we trying to solve with digital marketing, just a little bit on that to make sure we know the scope of, of what we're trying to do. And then the majority of the content will be on the solution. And I'll present a possible architecture and then I'll talk about plugins that you can pick and choose to actually fit into the different pieces of the architecture. Uh, for questions, I for, for those of you at the back you can't see, it's a, I, I do have a phase for questions at the very end. Um, however, I like it to be um, very uh, interactive. Um, so please, if you have a question, at some point, raise your hand, uh, shout it out. I'll try to answer it within the context of where we're at in the particular... I uh, keep... Oh, there's also... Well, at the very end, um, if we have more questions that I couldn't cover during the presentation, we have a microphone that we'll share through the audience. During the actual presentation, just, just shout it out and I'll repeat it back. Um, and that's it for questions. So please, if you have a question, let me know. Any questions? <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. So let's do, this happens all the time. I want to find out what type of people we have in the audience. So I'm going to do raise, of, you know, uh, raise your hand if you are a, a blogger and a hobbyist. Okay. Um, raise your hand if you have a small business or a not-for-profit that you're using WordPress to try to connect with people. Yeah, that's good, because that's this, this um, presentation is really set up for you guys, okay? Marketers, someone who has a marketing background. Oh, shoot. <laughs> so if I say something that's not quite right, either you know, help me out or maybe you know, like chastise me at the end of the presentation, marketing is, is a fun world with lots of storytelling. Um, uh, you'll see I'm, I'm going to focus more on um, the architecture of the digital marketing as opposed to the storytelling. Um, but for the marketers in the crowd, if there are questions from someone that I can't answer, uh, please feel free to give your opinion on what you think, uh, how marketing might fit into presentation. And then last question I have, how many geeks are in the crowd? How many developers are in the crowd? Oh shoot, I got a lot of them too. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a geek, I'm a background. This, this presentation is not going to be talking about development, right? And uh, at, at the most, the I'm going to get to development is I'm going to talk about plugin. But I'm really not going to get into the details of the plugin. For, so for the developers in the crowd, I, uh, if you have a development question, please ask me at the end. Uh, most of these people are here for uh, the marketing and how to, t you know, how to connect with their customers online. Any questions at that point? No, let's keep going. Who am I? I'm a geek, and I'm proud of it. I've uh, been a geek for a few decades now. Um, I started off in telecom, and I'm making a transition into marketing. Uh, the reason I'm making a transition into marketing is because when I was a, a kid, geeks didn't fit into marketing. In fact, they were shunned. I was off in the corner. 
where you find in the last 10, 15 years with the internet, with the uh, per pervasive personal computers, mobile phones, geeks like me are starting to rule the world. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> geeks. Ge <laughs> Okay. They're starting to become more relevant um, to to peep to to an average person who, who who doesn't have my very narrow focus in life. Um, so as I said, I, I'm I'm taking the geek. I'm now doing uh, digital marketing consulting, uh, focused on WordPress, um, and I'm. Uh, uh, businesses with their customers, and I probably should have phrased it the other way. It's really important to connect your customers to your business. If you're not understanding who your customer is, and a customer in the, in the context of a nonprofit might be a, a, someone who donates or someone who might use as your service. So I'm going to use the word customer, but it, it, it can be to anyone that you're trying to interact with and influence on your website. And uh, that's sort of where uh, my, my current uh, niche is right now. Um, I'm not going to talk about it, but I'm also a frustrated shopper. And if you're a frustrated shopper and want to talk about the shopping experience, not in this presentation, come and talk to me because I'm not happy. But that's another story. Okay. Let's, um, marketing, I want to start with marketing. And, and for the marketers in the audience, again, you can start in many different places. I, I happen to use something as basic as you're trying to connect the customer on the right-hand side with your product and services. It's as basic as that as a starting point, okay? Now, you might get a little fancy in the, the products and services. You might call it a unique value prop. And that's about as sophisticated as I want to start, okay? So how many people here have websites where they want to connect with a customer or they, they, they want to influence someone on their website? Yes, okay, that's everyone here, okay? Um, there is a, a gap between customers and businesses. And um, there, there are two different things you have to realize on how to bridge that gap. Probably the more important one is the, the relationship that you're trying to build with the customer. Okay? And the relationship is where the storytelling comes in. It's where the, 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 the fireworks and all that great, mar the, the content, you know, all that stuff you're, you're talking about. Um, that's important in terms of the customer relationship. But the other thing that's important, very important as well, is how do you reach your customer? And that's channels. What type of channels do you have? In the past, before the internet, before um, PCs, before all this mobile technology stuff, uh, it was pretty basic. You could do mass media, uh, newspapers, telephone, or sorry, well, newspapers, things like that, and it was a broadcast. What I want to talk about actually is the opposite. Well, not the opposite, but the enhancement of that uh, channel as opposed to one-way broadcast, all this technology that allows you to do two-way interaction. Any questions so far? Pretty basic, right? I haven't told anyone anything new, I hope. OK. There are challenges with that basic model, is that your customers are using new technology, which I'm kind of happy with because I'm a geek and I enjoy that sort of stuff. But they have, they have laptops, they have cell phones, they have tablets. I don't know, has anyone heard of the Internet of Things? Uh, wearables, right? I'm not going to get into that technology, but, but it's important for you as the owner of a website that wants to interact with your customers, you can't tell them how they're going to use that new technology. You have to understand who the customers are, and you have to go find out what technology they're using, and then you have to bring it back to your website or to your business and make sure that you're connected uh, to the customers in a way that they want to, to deal with you. Uh, the other thing that's challenging from a business uh, uh, owner is that there are new channels. So it's not, you know, it's not just the historical broadcast medium. You've got uh, the websites, you've got email, um, you've got all sorts of things like social media. Um, this, how many people know what responsive web design is? Yeah, good. Okay, so you guys are, are well informed. It's mo yeah, designing a website for a mobile phone so that you can interact with them on a mobile phone, just for those who didn't put your hand up. And then mobile apps. And the thing, again, because I'm a geek, which most people don't realize, is there's this way of measuring technology, you can measure how your customers are engaging with you. 
So this, this thing at the very bottom, for those of you who can't see in the back, it's called data analytics. Okay? And it's not just a matter, you're not, you're not lost with all this technology. You can actually, if you do a little bit of work and if you're intelligent, you can actually measure the ways that the customers are engaging with you and you can then make changes to make it easier for them. And that's what the data analytics is. Does this, does that resonate with people? Is that, do you, does, do some of the people out here have that type of problem? Are you worried about these type of things? Okay. Hands up, nods, okay. Not, not like nod yes as opposed to falling asleep sort of thing. Okay. Okay. With the technology change, there is an impact to the customer relationship. And there's also an impact on the product. Okay. So for the customer relationship, where you used to be able to tell them a story and they would come and buy and there wouldn't be a lot of questions, that's not the case anymore. Okay. So that your customers are going to have more choice. Um, there's going to be more competition. There's going to be less loyalty. And you, as a business, are going to be forced to become relevant. You have to fight for your, your little place in the internet, and you have to say, listen to me because I'm important, and this is why. So that's, that's a harder thing for you to do than, than what um, In terms of products and services, you might have to change what used to be a product because you're competing with Amazon into the servicing of that product because you have a unique skill set in a local area that is not served well in your area. So you've got to reevaluate re uh, what type of services um, you're using. You also might want to reevaluate whether you're just physically in a store or whether you want to be in e-commerce or whether you want to be on both. Okay? Uh, and then product and service, phys physical versus, uh, physical versus virtual is, there's a lot of things you can sell. You for instance, through a video, uh, as opposed to actually have a physical book that you might sell in the past. Okay, so what does this all mean? It means you've got some work. Okay, if you it, it it's challenging. There are things that are changing. Okay, you have the ability to do work in different pieces to connect with your customers. Um, there's a, what, six, one, six different components here. Um, everyone knows about search. Everyone knows about social media. Everyone has a WordPress web. Everyone's heard about email. Data analytics. How many people are using da their data analytics right now? Not bad, but not as many as everyone who has a business here. So data analytics is something that's a little new. And the, the last component I have is something called demand generation. And the way that I get that from a search and social media is I, I use search and social media on this particular diagram to mean unpaid, to be, um, uh, to, to be organic. You know, you're, you're doing stuff on your site for people to come in. Um, uh, demand generation is when you go and you pay money. So pay for, uh, uh, pay for click. Um, you put it on AdWords. You put it on social media, Facebook, and you're trying to, to bring people in. Okay. How many people, so everyone has a website. How, uh, how many people have tried to put this full type of diagram together on their business? One, this, okay, this is interesting. There's n like maybe 10% or 5% of the audience right now has gotten to the level where they're using all of these different technologies to work in concert to create what I would call a conversion, which is here, right? It's not, uh, for the people who are that advanced, is it something that you did with a five minute WordPress install? Is it something you did with a month of weekends? How about a couple years? How about five years? Okay, so this particular diagram, there's actually a, a lot in it. Uh, you don't have to do it all at once. Okay, but when you when you don't know about the the landscape, you might it might take you longer to to build it on your own and, and do a lot of trial and error. What you can do with this, but 
diagram is you can say, this is a piece that I want to do next with my business, and I'm going to focus in on this component, and I know that it needs to link to this other component. So that's the value of this particular diagram. How many, uh, do I have any, any questions on this one? Because this, this pattern is very important. Does it make sense? Nods, yeah, no one's sleeping yet? Okay, so far so good, okay. What I'm going to do for the rest of the presentation is, now that we know that everyone's here because we have a similar problem, and everyone is comfortable uh, with this landscape or this architecture, if you will, solution of that problem, let's take a look at WordPress and which plugins can be used to fill in those gaps on each particular com component. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah. Okay, good. Any questions? No. Can I get everyone to raise their hand? <laughs> Thank you. I didn't wake. Yeah, okay. Just, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to... Uh, uh, interaction is very good if, if you've got questions. Oh, actually, I apologize. Is my mic... How's the sound? Can it sound okay? Okay, they're, they're working on it. Um, actually, I, I did briefly mention it, but I do want to point out on this whole diagram, the most important point is at the end of that triangle where it says conversions. Because you're in this room not because you want to build a website, you're in this room because you want to take an action. And the terminology of that in digital marketing is called a conversion. Now it's going to be up to you to determine what type of actions you want and what type of conversions you, you, you have for your own particular business. Um, but if you take a look at the most important thing, if you're not getting, if you haven't thought into what are you trying to convert people to do, I wouldn't spend any time on doing any of the other nonsense because it's, it's, it's uh, wasted time. You have to start with what is the end goal and then work back, okay? And when I get into the plugins, it'll, I'll, you'll, you'll see that sort of um, in that conversions, okay? Excuse me a second. So, in order to build the digital marketing platform, we all start with a vanilla WordPress install. Five minutes, off you go, customers start rolling. Maybe not. Maybe not. Um, part of uh, the when you do the WordPress install, um, you have you noticed I've changed it from a triangle with conversions to a generic blob, right? You've got to do some you've got to do some work on top of your WordPress site in order to be able to move towards what you want them to do. Okay. Now, luckily, the great thing about WordPress, the thing I love about WordPress, is people have done this before. So they've done it before, and there's a, you know, a thousands of themes. I think I have 2,000 uh, on WordPress.org. If you go to uh, themeforest.net, you go to 20,000. Right? So great. you got all this. People have done it. You just have to go find one. You've got, uh, what are we at, 40,000 plugins right now. And it, it would change. Like my, I did this slide maybe six months ago, and it was around 36,000. So the good news is people have done this before. We're not the ones in this boat. Right? We just have to go and find what people have done before and you know, pick, install a couple plugins and five minutes after the five minute install, you'll be ready to go. No, well, okay. So there's a challenge going through 40,000 plugins and you know, 22,000 different themes. Um, which ones are gonna be relevant to you? So for the rest of the conversation we're gonna have today, I wanna talk about, well, which plugins should you use? Okay, so you've got thousands, tens of thousands of choices. Which one should you use? So, is there a single, I should, don't read that second bullet. Is there a single right answer? The answer, no. Okay, uh, for the marketers in the crowd, how many people have heard of the marketing mix? Does anyone want to give me a, a quick shout out? What is a marketing mix? Anyone, anyone, anyone? It's, yeah, it's, and it's creating, um, it's essentially, I, th I, I believe it comes from the idea of a cake mix. 
So you put different ingredients in, you're going to get a cake at the end, but the cake might have vanilla, might have chocolate. It's going to be something that you as a, as a website owner, as a business owner, you have to be responsible for what choices you make. Um, put some stuff in, try it. If it doesn't work, change the plugin, try something different. Okay. There's no right answer. I would recommend uh, doing a Google search on marketing as a starting point before you, you go too far down the plugin route. Okay. Um, I do have 30 plugins in those six different components that we're going to talk about today. I'm not, um, I'm not going to talk about them in any great depth, okay, because we're running out of time. Um, but something I'll mention is if you take a look at this WordPress, uh, this WordCamp uh, in Toronto this week or this weekend. You will, if, if you take a look at the schedule, you'll see at least 10 different sessions talking about, individually talking about some of those components. You've got analytics, you've got, um, uh, you've got a whole bunch of content, which is the, 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 the home base of WordPress. So this particular slide, sorry, this particular uh, discussion won't get into a lot of the details, but uh, make sure you go to the other sessions and see, you can see where the other sessions fit in with the large platform that you're trying to build. Any questions? Am I losing people? You awake? Okay. Ah, and sorry, there is a last, a last thing. As with anyone who talks about plugins, you're on your own in terms of testing. Make sure that you don't, don't listen to what I'm saying in terms of put a couple plugins and say, come back to me and say, David, it didn't work. Uh, I highly recommend you have a a uh, development platform where you're testing things before you publish it to your live site. Uh, just curious, how many people have a development platform? Good. Those ones who didn't put their hands up, please do that because it is ugly when you put in a plugin or you make a change and your site doesn't work anymore and you don't have a backup and then it's going to take you, you know, two or three weeks to recover to where you were. So uh, just a little caveat, everyone who talks about plugins will always make that caveat. How many people have heard of content marketing? Good, you're at a content, at the, the core of WordPress is blogging. Blogs are content. Content is good because people want to read about it, they want to come into your site, okay? Um, there are a large number of plugins available to do your content marketing with WordPress, okay? Um, I mentioned Jetpack at the very beginning, not because they're a sponsor here, uh, but independently, they're a, uh, I know that they are a well-known plugin. They actually do more than just content marketing. But because it's, it's coming out of the WordPress, I, I had to put them, I thought it was, would be best to talk about Jetpack um, in this particular slide. But there are things like um, uh, uh, BB Press. Um, do people know what Quora, Quora and Stackflow are in terms of websites? Right, so you ask a question. Somebody in the community answers, that's content. So you can do that, you know, if that's what you think would help bring your community to your site, uh, you've got those options. You can do webinars, and I've, I've mentioned um, just one, but if you want to do uh, web, uh, webinar ignition, you want to go to your plug, um, if you want to use this as a reference, you can go to the wordpress.org and do some searches for some of these names, you'll find different options. Okay, so don't feel restricted to what I've said. Um, video, how many people have video on their website? Good. Video is a very, very key way of attracting people as opposed to just text, right? Min at a minimum, uh, text and images. Don't, so don't just put text up there. Uh, text and images, but video is also a very good way of bringing people in. What else do we have? Aha, captures. Ah, well, you know, some people you want to talk to and some people you don't. Okay, so when you start having this two-way conversation on the internet and you're trying to engage in content, which is not just your own content, um, you have to make sure that you keep the bad guys off in the corner and that they don't come in and, and ruin your conversation. So you have to watch out for the bots and you have to worry a little bit about CAPTCHAs. 
Uh, sorry, CAPTCHAs. Uh, just double checking. Uh, does anyone want me to describe what a CAPTCHA is? Okay, I just there's there's a a CAPTCHA is a way of checking to see if you're human, right? So it's when you when you type. It's yeah, when you type something into a form, they want to make sure that it's not a computer uh, stuffing information in. It's just a way of making sure uh, that it's a human at the other end. That's important as long as you want to sell something to a human and not a computer. So it, it's a you, you've got to fight fire with fire essentially, and captures block that out. Um, and then uh, the last one, advanced ticketing system. I just kind of threw that one in. Um, if you want, if you have a business where you have an online presence and you want to potentially speed up your process flow of not having them call in and uh, making a, a problem report, you can actually have a ticketing service where, they, where your customers will go in and self-generate their own problem and then you get a list of things when you walk in in the morning. So it, I'm, I need too many things to talk about in terms of contenting, uh, content marketing. Um, the history of WordPress is a blog. Blog is content marketing. You've got a great start with content marketing uh, just by using WordPress. Any questions on content marketing? Okay. I want to guess which one I'm going to do next, which component. Which, what would the second most important thing be? Search. Search. So that, that's actually what I expected, but you know what? I put up analytics. There is a relationship between SEO and search and content marketing, and I'll talk about that. Um, but the reason I put up that analytics is to go back to the point that the most important thing of your website is to get a conversion. And if you put a lot of content in, and if you do a lot of work in search, and you do a lot of work in social media, and you have no idea who, how many conversions you're getting, you're at risk of doing a lot of work for nothing. So I would recommend that you spend a little bit of time on analytics and that you measure the key points of what you want to convert, okay? It does take, there, there is some intelligence required when I say that, um, but if you're not measuring conversions, um, you could be wasting a lot of time, okay? I'm, I'm, in terms of the data analytics, uh, there's different ways of doing conversions with Google Analytics. You, in theory, um, well, uh, sorry, with WordPress, you could check to see if your theme already has the analytics. Hopefully it does not, but it might, uh, because you do want to kind of separate actions from presentation. Themes uh, sometimes combine them. Um, so you may want to see if your, your the theme you're using is already using analytics. The other option is to take, uh, again, how many coders were here? Okay, you guys might want to take the Google Analytics and plop it directly into the, the header. Uh, don't, uh, and I guess you're smart enough not to do that because when you change your theme, it's going to rip out that code. So in theory, you could do it, but don't, but don't, okay? Um, highly recommend, I, well, not highly recommend. I use uh, uh, Google Analytics by Yoast. I find it very convenient. Um, you, you configure a couple of things with uh, the Go I use Google, yeah, it's Google Analytics. Yeah, I'm using Google Analytics as opposed to some other variants. Um, reasonably straightforward, and it gets me access without having to do a lot of work to get the analytics in in the different pages. But there's some other options, Google Analytics Dashboard uh, for WordPress and WP Statistics. For those who are using analytics already, do have, are those the types of plugins you're using, or do you have any other suggestions? Are you, is anyone using any of those three? Yes, okay, good, okay, just double checking. See, I, I'm not just totally on my own here. I wanna make sure that I'm giving good information. Ah, darn. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, I had to switch. I, I did this on a Mac in Keynote and then I'm presenting on a, on a, a PC and the search, I, I missed the, I, it's not search, it's search. Search and SEO. So we did content marketing, we did analytics, um, if you've got a lot of good content marketing and people can't find it, then again, that's, an, that's another thing that's not good. You want people to find it, whether it's Bing or whether it's on Google. I think there's some others, but those, <laughs> those are the DuckDuckGo, I think. Is anyone using DuckDuckGo? 
Yeah, it's it's. I'm I'm going to look into that one a bit more because I got to put on my tinfoil hat at some point. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you've got in uh, Yoast SEO, and again, I use I personally use uh, Yoast SEO, um, and then there's all-in-one SEO pack. Um, how many people have SEO plugins on their website already? Good. Yeah, that's something that that uh, is very accessible. And then when you're writing content and you have an SEO plugin, you're not going to get into the details of the plugin. But when you have an S uh, SEO um, uh, plugin, it gives you hints about what you can do on your content to make it more Google or more search friendly. I'll phrase it that way. Um, I do know in terms of search, uh, there's sort of on page and off page, off page being link building. And I don't think the plugins really help you with the link building part. You've got to do that on your own. Does everyone know what I mean by uh, on page and off page SEO? OK, R real quickly, on page SEO is probably what you're familiar with in terms of these plugins. A set of criteria, it gets quite com complex. There's a set of criteria that Google uses but doesn't tell anyone, but people reverse engineer on what you should do to make uh, 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 your, your, your content look better. Okay, that's the game of SEO. Part of, those, the part of the, uh, what Google uses, the criteria Google uses, is what is on your page. And that's what you can control directly, um, you know, using the right keywords, uh, making sure that headers uh, and, all, and, and image tags have the keywords in them. There's, there's things you can do on the page. The other part of Google, and this was actually the, the, the part of Google, was it used the concept that it's not just what's on your page, but it's who's linking to your page. And it, uses, and it came out of, uh, I believe it came out of scientific research, where when people write papers, and the more people that cite, that cite, that give citations to a paper, the more important the paper is. And that concept will apply to your website. So the more people, not, so you can do the plugins, but you also should be looking at getting links to your site from reputable, you know, from other reputable websites. And that's off page, and then on page is uh, really what I'm talking about with WordPress plugins. How are we doing for time? Actually, we're moving right along. Social media. And again, my thing got clipped off. I apologize for the, the, uh, the conversion. Um, how many people believe social media is actually useful to their business? How many people don't believe social media is useful to them? I, okay. Oh, they're okay, yeah. Um, I, I, I'd phrase it this way. Um, before digital media, you had this thing called word of mouth. And word of mouth is actually a very important way of marketing. Social media is you want to put energy into being word of mouth without actually um, being in, you know, being face to face. Um, I think it, it's, it's worth time identifying who your community is, where they exist on the internet, and how you want to interact with them. So at a minimum, I do think something like sharing their content easily to where your audience is, is a very good thing. Okay? Uh, so a couple, uh, sorry, uh, four plugins, WordPress social sharing optimization, Shareaholic, custom Facebook feed. Uh, I actually use add to any share buttons. How many people are using any of those plugins? Handful. Are there, am I missing any plugins for social media that people like? I, I had, yeah, see, Jetpack would probably fit. I put Jetpack at the very, the... Jetpack just incorporates something called publicize. Yeah, so Jetpack incorporates something called publicize. Yeah. yeah. Um, the thing about Jetpack is it actually does a lot of the what I'm talking about. But it, so it, it's a special case. Um, I put it in under content marketing because historically it came out of WordPress, which is a blog. But uh, I'll, I'll repeat it. Go back and take a look at Jetpack. Um, maybe it thought of what you want to do for your website without having to have different plugins. And that's actually one of the, maybe I just did a little, for our sponsor, I've just said the value of, of Jetpack. Yes, go ahead. Um, there's so many plugins out there. Do plugins slow down on your website? So the, the question is, there's so many plugins out there can slow down your website. Used a ton of them. Yeah, there's so the, many the, the short answer is yes, but... 
do you, do you have a programmer sitting beside you? No. Okay, you find a programmer. The, the, the short answer is yes, it does, right? The long answer is it depends. You vary, but then you have to take a look at what is actually going on. Uh, my background as a geek is I understand databases. I understand there's all sorts of algorithms and uh, orders of, you know, how certain algorithms are faster than others. You can spend a lot of time and money and energy on figuring out something try it and don't try it. Uh, that's probably, the, if you don't have access to a, a coder, just try it. Um, there are actually tools on speed for websites. Um, I, if you're not a programmer, I don't recommend that. You've got some other things, that you just trial and error for now, okay? When you uh, publish or post certain your, con your content to, to all, all the social media, Jetpack publishes it automatically, like three seconds after you, you click, versus the ad to it, which is a matter of way. Which one do you? I, I don't. I, I would say uh, I, I'm giving you a buffet of choice. And I'm not going to make, so I, I really can't make specific recommendations for your website. Come and talk to me later, and then we can have a, a different discussion. But for the purposes of this, it's really just to say, think about it and, and, and take a look at your own website. Uh, double check on time. It's five minutes. Five minutes, OK. OK. Now, I kind of put demand generation and email marketing together a little bit on purpose because the, the search and social media is very passive. It's how you write content and you hope people come onto your site. When you're talking about um, an email, you're actually trying to go to your customers. Uh, email marketing, very, very important to the internet marketing area. How many people are doing email marketing? Excellent. Yeah. I actually need to do better email marketing for myself, um, but in terms when you collect information about a, a customer that you can re-engage over a period of time, uh, very, very, very important, okay? Uh, the other thing you can do is, uh, sorry, and actually in terms of plugins, there's a plugin called email, if you believe it or not. They might want to expand it. Uh, MailPoet and MailChimp for WordPress. Um, those are some uh, uh, plugins that would be applicable to email marketing. Um, for actually, WP Subscribe is also applicable to email marketing. For uh, demand generation, um, I don't have time to get into it. But when you start getting into advanced areas of digital marketing, what you can do is you can do, um, uh, let's say, Google AdWords, where you get uh, you by paying get to the top of the line to the to the you know to that first. Um, a first page, and you can actually track when somebody clicks on that ad, did they go to your conversion point and did you make a conversion out of them? Okay, now that's, that's an advanced technique. I do recommend it to you, um, but if you don't have your social media set up, if you don't have your search, if you haven't done your analy analytics, you can't get that sophisticated. So the, the sorry, which, the, well, the, I'm talking about AdWords in general, but it could be Facebook ads. You can actually get a tag when people have, have clicked from Facebook or, or Google. They come onto your site, and when they make, when they do the, the subscribe, when they do the, the pay for, or, or, or the, the, the the buy button. But it's it's I, I, if, again, it's more sophisticated, more advanced. Just be aware of it uh, that it exists. Okay, uh, a tracking code manager is a, a plugin that manage those tags and see how they're converting. Okay, and last, although I said conversions are the most important point, uh, if everything that I've talked about so far is going to lead to a conversion, and there are conversion, or there are, there are plugins that you can use to help you with conversions. Um, two of the the very important conversions, and there are others, but two of the important conversions are e-commerce, you know, having somebody buy something on your site or a service, or a lead that you can follow up and talk to someone in person. So for e-commerce, it's WooCommerce, Easy Digital Download, 66, iThemes Exchange. How many people are using WooCommerce? Excellent. Okay. 
Um, and then for lead, uh, sorry, lead conversions, then you get into plugins like Forms. There's Gravity Forms, Ninja Forms. I use Contact Form 7. And then you can also get into specialized plugins like Leadin, which also tracks analytics on your conversions. Any questions on that slide? OK, I am running out of time. So I'm almost at the end. I just want to repeat the, the, the pattern that I think you should be paying attention to. It's not necessarily you want to follow it exactly component by component, but as you're building out your website, as you're building out a digital marketing platform, double check. Have I missed any really important plugins? Does anyone? Oh, which one? A, 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 a kids, yeah, that comes uh, embed installed. Um, yeah, exactly, that would. Um, it, it's it's a paid add-on, but it comes. I think it's free if it's for personal use. Am I wrong? Yeah. Well, for for you guys, your businesses, it's a paid, but it's definitely worth the investment because what it does is it stops the spam and it getting in the way of the conversations. Yeah, and you don't have that captcha issue because that's. Um, Yep. Actually, you know what? I appreciate that feedback. I'm going to make a change to my slide. That's actually an important enough plugin that I, I agree that it should be on here. So, any other favorite plugins? What's the last one? Sorry. A S K I M E T. Ask event. Is that, did I spell it right? It's in A K I. Yeah. It could. A K I S. Yeah, sorry. I'm also a little dyslexic, so. <laughs> yeah, I'll use that as an excuse. And I saw another question, but I just double check the time. How much time do I have? I've got one minute. A couple references. Again, you can find the slides up. I actually like a book called Waiting for Your Cat to Bark. It's actually pretty old. <laughs> But this is the essence of digital marketing. You can't wait. You can't ring the bell and expect your customers to do something. You're, you're trying to get cats and you know, influence them into doing an action. It's harder. The slides are on uh, slideshare.net. Uh, so any questions? Yes. Um, what's like a general conversion rate that you're satisfied with? Oh, I love that question because you can't answer it. <laughs> So the question was, what is a good conversion rate? What's one that you're personally would be satisfied with? 5%. No, no, it, it context specific. If I, don't, if I don't say it that way, 5% might be very good. Um, on the other hand, I, you know, for some particular context, I want a 10%. Sure. What, the, way to, the best way to answer it, for when, I get into the, when I'm talking to a client, I say, let's start it. Let's see where you're at. And then what do we need to do to make it better? Because there's typically something you can do to make it better. But don't you, it, you can't just answer it as a generic. Sorry. Other, uh, David, can you go back just two slides? Mind? Sure. Where you got Whoops. E commerce. And one more. One more. Uh, there it is. Thank you. OK, I think I've run out of time. What I'll say for anyone who has questions, please come and talk to me. Thank you very much. You've been a great audience. Awesome, guys.